when the Apollo 14 mission was still in the planning stages, astronaut Stuart Russo was asked to take the first seeds into space and back to Earth to analyze the effects of radiation on them. In a joint effort between NASA and the U.S. Forest Service, the seeds were then planted all over the United States and in some locations abroad, and many of them grew up to become what is referred to as moon trees. The experiments carried out during the mission would set the foundation for future space exploration. And although most of the moon trees remain anonymous, they still connect the moon and the Earth in a simple yet meaningful manner. A smoke jumper on the moon. NASA astronaut Stuart Rusa was born in Colorado in 1933 and became interested in science at an early age. During the 1953 fire season, Russo worked for the Forest Service as a smoke jumper, a specially trained first responder firefighter that has dropped right into the heart of wildland fires. Russo graduated from the University of Colorado Boulder in 1960 with a Bachelor of Science degree in Aeronautical Engineering. He then joined the Aviation Cadet Program at Williams Air Force Base, where he received his flight training commission in the Air Force. The pilot also attended the U.S. Air Force Aerospace Research Pilot School and even worked as a test flight pilot at Edwards Air Force Base. In 1966, Russo was one of 19 people selected for the year's astronaut class. After graduation, he worked as the capsule communicator during the Apollo 1 mission and was a member of the astronaut support crew during Apollo 9 in 1969. Russo's achievements earned him a place as a crew member of the Apollo 14 mission, the first to land in the Lunar Highlands and the third expedition to land on the moon. Before the mission was launched, Russo was contacted by Ed Cliff, one of his old friends from his smoke jumper days and now chief of the Forest Service. Cliff had a suggestion for Rusa, to bring the first seeds into space as part of his personal preference kit, a pouch that Apollo astronauts were allowed to fill with prized earthly possessions. Cliff then contacted Stan Krugman, staff director for forest genetics research at the Forest Service, and carefully selected the first such specimens that would fly into lunar orbit aboard Apollo 14. These would be 500 seeds from five species, loblolly pine, sycamore, sweet gum, redwood, and Douglas fir. Apollo 14. The Apollo 14 mission was initially scheduled for 1970, but had to be postponed following the failure of Apollo 13 to reach the moon's surface. On January 31, 1971, at 4.03 p.m., Commander Alan Shepard, Lunar Module Pilot Edgar Mitchell, and Command Module Pilot Stuart Rusa launched from Earth on their nine-day mission. The crew faced several malfunctions that could have resulted in a second consecutive aborted mission and possibly the Apollo program's end. Still, the team managed to overcome the eventualities and landed safely on the moon. Shepard and Mitchell explored the area and even played golf in the craters, mountains, and plains of the Fra Mauro region, while also conducting experiments on the lunar module Antares. Meanwhile, Russo orbited the moon above them in the command and service module Kitty Hawk, where he conducted observations, experiments, and scientific investigations. Russo's primary tasks were to take a series of high-resolution photographs of potential landing sites for future Apollo missions. He captured several images of the Descartes region of the satellites, the leading choice for the Apollo 16 mission's landing spot. During the command module's 17th revolution, Russo spotted the shadow of the lunar module Antares on the moon's surface. During another pass, the pilot saw a bright reflection from the insulation on one of the Apollo lunar surface experiment package instruments. Then, on the 21st revolution, Russo indulged in a nine-hour sleep period, while Shepard and Mitchell only slept for four hours in the cramped lunar module. Rusa carried the seeds with him in small containers as part of an experiment to determine their effects while in space. The project was also chosen to raise awareness of the wildland forest firefighter smoke jumpers. Following Apollo 14's landing, the container that held the seeds ruptured during the decontamination processes. The specimens were mixed together and exposed to chemicals, compromising the experiment's environment. The seeds were thought to be unusable, but only time would tell whether the effort of Rusa and the Forest Service had been in vain. Moon Trees Back on Earth, the U.S. Forest Service and NASA mapped out a plan to germinate the seeds and test whether exposure to space and its harsh radiation had any effect on them. According to Stan Krugman, quote, We had a bit of a scare. We weren't sure if they were still viable. The seeds were then sent to several nurseries, depending on their kind. The sycamore, loblolly pine, and sweetgum types traveled to the Southern Forest Service Station in Gulfport, Mississippi, while the redwood and Douglas fir were sent to the Western Station in Placerville, California. The first attempts to germinate moon trees were a failure. However, the second round of tests proved much more successful as they were overseen by expert plant scientists. The seeds eventually germinated and grew into seedlings, small plants that had already been to the moon. 
Each sprout had an earthbound genetic twin derived from the same set of seed parents, and Krugman and his collaborators were able to compare both trees. As the seeds turned into saplings and then into young trees, the plants were used as part of a U.S. bicentennial celebration between 1975 and 1976. During one special ceremony in which Rusa took part, President Gerald Ford said in a telegram, quote, This tree, which was carried by astronaut Stuart Rusa, Alan Shepard, and Edgar Mitchell on their mission to the moon, is a living symbol of our spectacular human and scientific achievements. It's a fitting tribute to our national space program, which has brought out the best of American patriotism, dedication, and determination to succeed. One of the trees was planted in the White House. In contrast, many others were sent to state capitals, historical locations, and other particular areas across the country, such as Washington Square in Philadelphia, the International Forest of Friendship, several universities, and the Goddard Space Flight Center. Some of the trees were even sent offshore to Brazil and Switzerland, and one was especially presented to the Japanese emperor. Locating the Trees Five decades after the Apollo 14 mission, only the whereabouts of about 50 trees are known, with hundreds more aging in states such as Florida, Arizona, and California. According to Dave Williams of NASA's Goddard Space Flight Center, quote, Hundreds of moon trees were distributed as seedlings, but we don't have systematic records showing where they all went. Although some trees live hundreds or even thousands of years, some of these might already be experiencing old age, and Williams wants to find them before it's too late. A dozen of the recorded trees have already disappeared, including the loblolly pine at the White House and one pine in New Orleans that was damaged by Hurricane Katrina and later removed. Williams helped set up a website to find the remaining moon trees and has so far located them in over 22 states, Washington, D.C., and Rio Grande do Sul in Brazil. In many cases, the tree's extraordinary pedigrees were recorded on plaques, benches, or archived newspaper clippings commemorating the planting event. Williams recalled, quote, They were just seeds when they left Earth in 1971 on board Apollo 14. Now they're fully grown. They look like ordinary trees, but they're special because they've been to the moon. An Enduring Legacy Apart from the original moon trees, the second generation developed from them and are known as half-moon trees. Stuart Rusa passed away in 1994, but the moon trees which he carried from space are a lasting memorial. After his passing, his daughter Rosemary created the Moon Tree Foundation, a nonprofit with the objective to inspire interest in education, science, space, conservation, and peace for all mankind. As NASA and its international partners prepare for the Artemis program, a human spaceflight plan operating since 2017 that has the goal of returning humans to the moon for the first time since the Apollo, the Moon Tree's legacy will continue to spread over space exploration. According to acting NASA chief historian Brian Odom, quote, the historic voyages of the Apollo program were about bold exploration and incredible scientific discovery. Apollo 14 included the widest range of scientific experiments to that point in the program, but in the case of Rusa's moon trees, it was what the astronauts took with them on their lunar journey that has left such an indelible mark on the landscape back on Earth. Thank you for watching our Dark Space video. Don't forget to subscribe to our other Dark Documentaries channels and let us know in the comments below about your thoughts on scientific experiments carried out in outer space.